One of the biggest hurdles anyone can face in their workshop is the shop itself. A cluttered, disorganized shop is a constant force working against your productivity. But in this video, I'm taking my shop organization to the next level. I've got a ton of tips for how to deal with hard to store tools, getting down into those drawers and cleaning up that clutter, as well as taking advantage of one basic rule of organization. Well, the shop isn't gonna organize itself. Let's get into it. If there's one part of any workspace that can get out of hand in a hurry, it's drawers. There's no feeling like opening a drawer only to be attacked by an avalanche of chaos. But it doesn't have to be this way. Drawer organizers come in a lot of different formats, from the ubiquitous plastic silverware tray all the way to the fancier bamboo models that let your guests know you're better than them every time you host a dinner party. And while I think these options are not great for the workshop, I do think the idea can be translated fairly easily. Behold, the marvel of organization for those who like their drawers as clean and tidy as a freshly made bed. And although this setup has a lot in common with its kitchen cousins, this is completely customized to fit this space and what I want to put in these drawers. And this type of setup is surprisingly easy to execute. I mean, after all, these are just thin strips cut up and assembled together, and we can handle that. The first thing I need to do is survey the drawer for size and then have a look at everything I want to keep in there. I want to make sure I account for the dimensions and quantities of the different items. Then I want to loosely arrange some of the items inside of the drawer, or in this case, a mock-up that I drew on my assembly table, in a way that makes sense to me and that makes the best use of the space. To start, I need to cut some thin strips of plywood. I'm using half inch for this drawer. You could probably get away with a quarter inch if that's what you had. Cutting these strips is pretty easy. You could make these cuts on a bandsaw, but I find you get a much smoother finish if you use a table saw. But either way, I get to use one of my favorite tools, the thin rip jig. This little guy slides in your miter slot and locks into place, and then I can adjust it to cut a consistent width of strip on the outside of the saw blade. All I have to do is make the cut, readjust my fence until it makes contact with the jig again, and then make my next cut. All right, safety timeout. The reason why you wanna cut on the outside of the blade and use a jig like this, instead of cutting between the blade and the fence, it's just much harder to control really thin pieces, even if you have one of the fancy yellow push blocks. Because this sits in front of the blade on the outside, there's no pinching that's gonna happen from making that cut. Once I was cutting a bunch of strips for cutting boards against the fence and a piece fired back so violently that it went almost clean through the back wall of my shop. So, for the cost of a $25 jig, I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen again. Okay, back to work. To cut the grooves in these pieces, I set up my table saw with a dado stack. You could do this with a regular saw blade with a flat grind tooth, but I wanted to be able to make these cuts in one pass and move on, so it's dado stack for me. I dialed in the dado stack to match the exact width of the piece of plywood that I'm using so that you get a nice snug fit like this. I make the grooves nice and deep about two thirds of the way or so through the plywood. That way these dividers aren't gonna fall out of the grooves and everything has such a nice snug fit that when I'm assembling this inside the drawer, I'm not using any glue, screws, brad nails, nothing. It's just a friction fit. Ah, nice. This type of organization works really well for drawers with large items, long and skinny items like pencils or rulers, but what if your drawers are filled with lots of tiny things? For me, one of the biggest things to avoid in a shop is disorganized fasteners. If you're not careful, you're going to spend a lot of time digging through a pile, searching for the exact right bolt like you're on the saddest treasure hunt ever. So if you need to store fasteners, my all-time favorite find are these little 8-ounce plastic deli containers, and they're pretty cheap to buy in bulk. And I really like them because they're flat and stackable, so you can really pack out a drawer with a lot of fasteners. Obviously, they're clear, which is nice, so you can see what's inside there and know how many you have left. And if you need to get super specific about what's in there, it's real easy just to throw a label right on the top. And I find that this size container works like 99% of the time for the number of fasteners that I have. And it's just really nice to be able to select the fastener you need, take it with you to your project, and then bring that container right back to its home when you're done. But in this drawer, I keep all of my bits and drivers and things, and I don't want to use the deli containers because I don't want these locked away. I want to be able to see what I want and then grab one and go. So instead, I like to use these open containers. They come in different sizes so that I can store larger items or that have these really small drawers to keep all of my driver bits organized. 
These come in a set of 42 for like 20 bucks, which I think is a pretty killer deal for organization. And they come in multiple colors, so if orange is not your jam, no problem. And they have these little connectors so you can put all these together so everything's not all loosey-goosey in here. These give me the ability to lay out the drawer in lots of different formats, and just like my homemade dividers, it's very visual and grab-and-go. Okay, the last tip I have for maximizing drawer storage is the use of sliding trays. And this is great if you have nice deep drawers where you can keep a layer of tools on the bottom and then another layer on top like this. The first thing you need to do is determine how much clearance you need for the items on the bottom so that the tray slides without bumping into things. Then just glue or tack a couple of strips to each side of the drawer to match that clearance. Finally, just build out some small trays that fit the width of the drawer like this. To make these trays, I just used a quarter inch piece of plywood for the bottom and some small strips to go around the edge. You know, taking care of my shop is important now more than ever because it's where I make my living. Recently, I went through a big life change, leaving my 20-year corporate career to run my own business. And while that's a very positive change, it does come with its share of mental and emotional challenges that talking through with a therapist could help. There's a lot of stress, anxiety, and burnout that come along with the dream of being your own boss. And heading those things off before they cause real harm is important to me. Mental health isn't something that a lot of us think about, but getting help today isn't as difficult as you might think, thanks to the sponsor of this video, BetterHelp. BetterHelp can match you to over 30,000 therapists in their network, giving you access to a wider range of expertise that may be available in your area. And with BetterHelp, you can have a therapy session over the phone, via video, chat, or text messaging to match your level of comfort. To get started, you'll fill out a questionnaire to help assist your specific needs, and then you'll get matched with your therapist, in most cases within 48 hours. And you can plan your sessions based on your schedule, so it's most convenient to you. So if you think you might benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp, and you can do that by clicking the link in the description below or visiting betterhelp.com slash MWA Woodworks. Clicking that link will give you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp, so you can get connected to a therapist and get the help that you're looking for. And thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. So in my default out-of-the-box state, I prefer my workspaces to be tidy and visually clutter-free. I don't really like seeing tools sitting or hanging off of every surface no matter where I turn. Do you ever try to solve a problem in your head while other people are carrying on conversations all around you and their words and your thoughts are competing for your brain's attention? For me, it's like that, but with my eyes. That's why I like things in drawers or behind closed doors, which is why I build a lot of cabinets in my shop. The fewer things that mentally get between me and my creativity, the better. But I was recently watching a video by Adam Savage where he was talking about first order retrievability. And the basic concept is that as a worker in your space, you want the tools that you absolutely use the most organized in a way that they are easy to find and close at hand. And I think I've done a pretty good job with the organizing and keeping tools close to where I use them, but sometimes I struggle with the easy to find part. It comes with the territory when you like things to be out of sight. Labeling things does help me, but it doesn't do much good if I rearrange things and don't change the labels. Over time, I've realized that there's got to be a balance, a happy middle ground between cluttered and completely hidden. And one of the ways I've changed my approach is with this drill charging station. On the one hand, it does exactly what it says it does. It charges my drill batteries, but it does a lot more than that. I keep all my drills and drivers hanging right here, ready to grab and go. And it's also pretty easy to tell when one is missing. And yes, all you people heading down to the comments right now, I know. I've got a lot of drills and nobody needs that many drills. What can I say? I like drills. Those were missing. I also set up the rest of this station in the same grab-and-go style of organization. I've got my most used sandpaper here, and I have my most commonly used hand tools here and here. And I keep all my common fasteners up here. I've got a collection of construction screws. I've got a whole bunch of pocket screws, and I even have an assortment of dominoes when I need to grab some of those. These bins are really large, and you can fit a ton of fasteners inside each one of them, and they're clear so you can see exactly how many you have left, and you'll know if you need to go get more or not. And they come with labels that will go on these little thumb tabs on top, but because I keep my bins up high, I found it better to just use a label maker and label what goes in here right on the front. This station puts a lot of tools in one place that are easy to grab and use, but still fit neatly in the cubbies, which my brain and eyes seem to find acceptable. 
I do need to take it one step further and get that sandpaper out of the boxes and into some slots, but that's a project for another day. The next compromise I made was to create kind of the same thing, but for non-power tools. I had a lot of unused space under these cabinets, so I wanted to leverage that space by creating more grab-and-go storage. And it's pretty eclectic, as you can see, lots of random things here, but that's really the point of this type of organization. You're organizing it by frequency of use and not by the type of tool like you might have in the rest of your shop. And this is where customization is key. You may ask, well, what kind of tools should go on something like this? And I can't really answer that for you because it has to be dictated by the way you work and the tools that you use the most. It would be nice for me to just be able to tell you exactly what to do, but in this case, I'd be taking away an opportunity for you to think through how your process works and how to solve these problems yourself. All I think I can do for sure is agree with Adam that this is an iterative process. You try something, see what works and what doesn't, and then try and try again until you get to a place where you really have a hard time justifying making a change to your setup, which I'm absolutely sure I'll do again. Sometimes you'll run into situations where you have tools that just don't fit well inside of drawers and you need to come up with a custom solution. Take saw blades. You could just throw your blades on top of one another in a drawer like some kind of psychopath, but there are at least two reasons why- Ow! It's like an angry beaver den in there. Yeah, like I was saying, as you're busy getting mangled looking 7D for the right saw blade, you can also damage the carbide on the teeth. That stuff's really strong and good at cutting through woods, but not at standing up to other carbide teeth. You could do your best to try to alternate the teeth so that they don't touch one another, but that's really only going to work with something like this 20 tooth ripping blade. Try that with an 80 tooth trim blade. My solution was to create this slide out blade organizer. This hanger was super easy to make. It's just two pieces of plywood connected by drawer slides and some 5 8 inch dowels to hold the blades. Now I can store my blades vertically so the teeth aren't grinding on one another like kids at a high school dance. And I can organize them by type of blade so that I spend less time digging through the pile looking for the type of blade that I need. It's very low profile and I can still use the rest of this drawer to store other stuff. Okay, this one is so super niche and random, but I absolutely love it because it just proves that you can maximize any and all storage space inside your shop. So if you have a 3D printer, you can make these little trays that slide right into the rail on the side of your saw stop. Now, they might work on other saws as well. I can only confirm that they work on a saw stop. And normally you would have this little plastic plug that goes on the end, but you can chuck that. We're not going to be using that anymore. When you print out your tray, you can just slide it right into the side here. And now you have this tiny little cache of the most commonly used things at your saw. I've got a pair of glasses in here, safety glasses. I've got a pencil, a little ruler, and a tape measure. And I am good to go. Another one of my favorite just random storage solutions are these fast cap track racks, which are designed to hold your track saw guide rails. Mine are Festool, but they'll work with any of the major brand track saw guide rails. And these just screw onto things like your garage door, but it doesn't have to be a garage door. You can add them to the wall of your shop as well. These guide rails are made of aluminum and pretty expensive, so taking care of them is really smart. And that's what these track racks are. Very simple and very smart. And the last type of custom storage solution I want to talk about has to do with managing hoses and power cords. And I think one of the best inventions are these retractable reels. I have one here for my air compressor hose and it's just bolted to the wall right next to my compressor. It's really nice because it holds a whopping 50 feet of hose inside that reel. And could you imagine just having 50 feet of hose sitting in a pile on the floor? And I have a similar setup in my garage for a heavy duty power cord. I attached it up and out of the way on the ceiling, but I can reach any part of my garage, into my workshop, and even all the way into the yard if I need power out there. Bonus tip. The last solution that I want to show you for drawers takes it all the way to 11 for organization, and that's using Kaizen foam to organize your tools. If you're not familiar with Kaizen foam, it comes in big sheets and a couple different thicknesses, and if you look closely, it's got a bunch of different layers. In theory, you're supposed to be able to pull these layers away using just your fingers. And I say in theory because half the time it works great, and the other half the time it looks dirty, ragged, and you end up pulling through to different layers, just not super clean looking. But the idea is this stuff is supposed to be used kind of like the inverse of a shadow board. To use this stuff, you're supposed to lay your tool onto the foam and then trace around it so that you can cut that shape out. 
And this foam cuts amazingly well. You can use a utility knife or a thin razor like this one that's going to allow you to cut that shape into the foam and then use your fingers to pull out the different layers in the middle. And now your tool has its own tool shaped home. Normally, I would say this is an order of magnitude more than you need to go for everyday shop storage. It would get really expensive and time consuming to cut out spots for every tool in every drawer. But there is one circumstance where I found this to be immensely valuable, and that's when I was building my portable workbench. So this workbench has a drawer on each end, and I wanted to be able to carry a set of my most used tools along with the bench wherever I went, and you can't just have stuff rattling around in those drawers every time you carry the workbench. This foam allowed me to pack out the drawers with all the tools I wanted, and I was even able to double stack some of them so that nothing can rattle around or get damaged in transport. And I even found these little foam test tube carriers that work perfectly for 20 millimeter bench dogs. It'd be super easy to lose those little suckers, and they're not cheap. And you also don't want to damage these and put dents and dings in them because they are used for accuracy and cutting. So I think this was a pretty big find. And if you're like me and you want to mix your love of organization with your love of cool tech, then you need to try this out. This is the Shaper Trace. Check out what it can do. I can take any tool, for example, this chisel, and trace an outline on a piece of paper using a black marker. When I'm done, I can set my outline inside the Shaper Trace and use the app on my smartphone to take a picture of my drawing from just about any angle. And magically, I now have a digital representation that's perfectly to scale, and I can save this off as a vector file that can be loaded into any CAD software. I can arrange those vectors any way I like inside my CAD software and create tool paths for my CNC. Now instead of using a razor to cut this out by hand, I can just make the robot do it for me. A little two-sided tape keeps the foam in place on the bed of the CNC and a special foam cutting bit from bits and bits chucked up into the spindle and I'm ready to go. The CNC can fly through this foam because there's not much resistance and it can create a really clean pocket with a nice flat bottom. Oh, now I got a nice little bed for this chisel, and this process is completely customizable to fit any drawer space. Okay, that's it. Go forth and organize.